So in this video, I want to talk about 100 Girlfriends again. Honestly, I've been having a blast watching the anime and there are so many interesting things to talk about. But one topic that I wanted to talk about is something that's been cropping up is that people are saying that 100 Girlfriends is Yuri now because of the fact of what happened in the recent episode where two particular individual girls basically kissed or made out. So one thing I want to go over is the definition of what a Yuri is and again, you can look it up any way you want, but the general consensus of what makes a Yuri is two girls that are in love, a romance between two girls. So the thing is, is that I've seen a lot of videos, particularly some saying that, oh, well, this is a Yuri anime now. And I did make a post on X or Twitter, whatever you want to call it, about asking people, do they think it's Yuri? It's a genuine question. I am very curious to know if people think this is now suddenly a, is got Yuri in it, and does this count as Yuri because of that scene? But as far as my stance goes, the answer is no. And the reason being is very simple. These two girls were under the influence of a liquid which made them into kissing zombies. So they kissed because of the impulse that was put into them because of the liquid of which they drank. And then after that, they basically played it off as like, oh yeah, I don't remember. Now, of course, if later on in the series, because I haven't read the manga, they do something again of their own free will, then that could be classified as yeah, it's, it's got Yuri in the series. But to classify the anime as having Yuri in it because of this scene is, in my opinion, kind of disingenuous. And it feels like people are kind of baiting Riv titles like that. But I get why. I know how YouTube works. I'm a YouTuber myself or an anti-tuber. I know why people do that. But to me, that doesn't feel genuine because, again, they are the under the influence of a substance they're kissing against their own free will because of those impulses and then afterwards they basically just deny it and they they're all shy and flustered about it now of course they could be shy and flustered because maybe they do have little crushes on each other but again at this point in the anime it doesn't specify that it could just be they just feel embarrassed in general and they don't want to talk about it because they have feelings for someone else which they both said they like the main protagonist that's the point of the story so for me it's just one of those where i'm like does this count as yuri no, not in my opinion. Unless something happens later on, then I would be like, okay, fine, then it does. But right now, no. And I think it's become a bit of a heated argument because a lot of fans are like, well, no, this doesn't count. You know, there are actual other Yuri series out there that should count. And trust me, I watch a lot of animes. There are a fair few animes that I watch that are proper, genuine Yuris. One of my favorite is uh, a villainous series where uh, Catale Cataliza... I can't pronounce this. So. It's, a, it's a good light novel series that I watched that has multiple, two seasons and a movie that just came out recently. And I love that. But that's also one where there's like the girls and the guys are into her. So it's like both. It's like a big, big, like both sided harem. So it's one of those that is partial harem as well. Uh, partial harem. Partial, partial Yuri, but it's a big harem. There's actual proper pure Yuri's out there as well. So there's there's that got that series, there's stuff out there for that, that appeases to fans. But I just don't count this as one of those. And I feel like people are labeling this as a Yuri, not understanding either the definition of it or just labeling it that because they just want to, to force that title tag on it. There's plenty of other series that are I don't think labeling this as one is right, but again, everyone else is entitled to their own opinion as long as you're not forcing it in someone's face and saying, you have to believe this or else, but it is what it is. I will note, though, I've been absolutely loving this series. The temptation to read the manga is very high, but I I really enjoy being an anime-only fan with a lot of these series because I do read a lot of source material. I read a lot of mangas, a lot of light novels, and I don't talk about all of them on the channel just because, at the end of the day, not many people really care about a lot of the manga and light novel stuff that I talk about. Maybe one day I can make an extra third channel where I talk about all the extra little, little bibs and bobs that I read in do reviews on those but it is a series that I really am curious about I've seen a lot of comments in the comment section of people telling me not spoilers but just saying hey this is what the series is going to be like like it upholds to these standards that you are wondering about so it's not spoiler comments so thank you to the community for not spoiling stuff but I also have a, a insane theory that I actually wanted to put out in a video as well along with this so bear with me one of the things that I noticed in the anime is the white cat 
and they always emphasize on it and I've, I've kind of wondered to myself like each individual girl feels quite unique and different and I wonder if they're gonna like as, as said in the last video that they would uphold that I've been told that that is the case but I also wondered if that white cat is like some shape-shifting girl that's just got like a crush on the main protagonist and she's like watching him and she just like changes like a druid because that I was like maybe that's a possibility like they could go really crazy have like you've got like a your, your sports girl that hasn't been done you've got your gamer girl they could do one of those they could also do like a druid just to be really insane out there they could also do like a witchcraft one where a girl's like a, a witch or something and she's doing like some dark shady stuff in like in a science lab even though you've got like the other science girl and the ai girl doing some kind of more spin to a science girl that's more witchcraft could be kind of fun and it could be an interesting combination between the current girl that's been added and another girl like that so be some interesting combinations i've kind of wondered just how insane they will go because again it's 100 girlfriends so there's 100 different girls they're going to add and i just feel like if they are going to go as far as they have here where they're going to make them all unique and interesting and different the possibilities are endless of how far they will go so it's just really 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 fun and amazing to kind of speculate on what they could do because these kind of series you don't really have too much to over analyze but with this one you kind of do because you kind of wonder where they're going to go with it but also some of the interesting developments that some of these girls go through because each of them has their own backstory and they get their own little moment to shine and i've been told that that continues for all the girls so it's one of those where it's like <laughs> how are they going to finish this? this 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 should be like a one piece type series where it goes on for like thousands of chapters of just endless development for all these girls and just the pot the potential is well, it's just unlimited potential let's just say that so i'd really love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below who is your favorite girl and why because there's so many good reasons to why you can love certain girls and for me <clears throat> as much as i do love my thirsty girl i really do like the other girls as well like it's yes i have my favorite but each of the girls just is so good in their own right like the bookworm girl like the fact that she uses a book to communicate and she doesn't talk but she's just so sweet she's timid she just she just is so pure in nature itself like it's just the most pure gentle heart that you can imagine then yeah you've got the sundere girl and yeah sundere's can be very generic and boring in many shows but she's also kind of got like an innocent side to herself as well like she'll overreact to something very emotionally like emotional reflex but then once she realizes oh she overreacted she then becomes all sulky and kind of you know puts her head into the to the main protagonist's chest and he just pats her on the head like those interactions like she actually is sorry about being overzealous about things which i actually really like and it's kind of refreshing because one of the things about sundares in a lot of series that i've watched they will be a sundare and then they won't be sorry for misunderstanding a situation they're just stubborn and stubborn is fine but as a character trope or as a character you know thing in a well just in general like a character defect i see it as a character defect because it is being stubborn but when it's done so many times it's annoying like so many sundares are just stubborn by nature so they do something or well, they overreact they become overzealous and then they just don't sit there and apologize for their mistake they just kind of stomp off and go well, you deserved it anyway it's like okay a couple of characters like that in animes it's fine but if it's just the over the done it gets annoying so it's actually nice to have a sundare that's actually remorseful or says sorry or actually shows you know regret when overreacting to something and then of course you got the thirsty girl i love her you know why i love her this the, the imagination that she has is just wild and vivid it's beautiful i love it it's music to my ears it's music to my eyes it stimulates all the beautiful senses if you get my drift <laughs> i just want to say that just to see people like we're like what and then of course you got the ai girl i really love how calculated she is like the efficiency system that she's got going but also the fact that her curiosity also pushes her efficiency like in in a normal mindset like romance and love is kind of in an inefficiency when you think about it because other than re reproducing it, it's a distraction but she's she's in love so she justifies it and i just like that cuteness in her she's just oh, she's so good so good and then of course you've got the chemist girl <laughs> And, and her wild uh, 
liquids and contraptions and little things that she gives people to drink. It's just the way she was added and also her backstory of how she kind of sh shut people off. I do think sometimes she needs to remember not to um, give substances to people against their will. She needs to remember that. But I do feel like that is going to be a running thing that where she's going to come up with something, try and put it on the main protagonist, and it's going to be drunk by one of the other girls and it's going to have a crazy effect or, yeah, it it's it's fun i love the series there are so many things to gush about each of the individual girls and i look forward to seeing what other girls get added in the future episodes and i definitely think this will be a long running anime to say the least and of course long running manga so i'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below if you like this video hit the like subscribe and i'll see you beautiful nerds in the next video